Senate District number 30. And they, I'm going to call them in ballot order, and if you'll come up and take a seat. Uh, first, it will be uh, Cody Clark, then J.C. Yarborough. This is Jace, ma'am. Jace, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's J.C. Jace Chase. This is J.C. Jace with a J, Okay. Uh, Mr. Hoggerview and Gary uh, Goodmore. You can skip chairs. Sorry, I apologize. Okay, with that, we're going to start with opening statements. Uh, your timekeeper's in front of you, and okay, Mr. Clark, you are up first. All right, I appreciate y'all having me and JC out. Uh, my name is Cody Clark. I'm <laughs> <laughs> working for Texas City District 30. I appreciate your consideration for your vote. More than anything, I appreciate y'all braving the cold to be out here. So give me the five-second pitch on me. I'm a police officer by trade. What I do now, while I'm not in law enforcement anymore, I take care of people with special needs. We take care of where they live in our community. We need their medical and therapeutic needs. So anything that you might need in your life or I might need in my life, we do on behalf of those individuals. What that's turned into over a decade of time, though, is we work the legislature quite a bit. So we're down there focusing on those substantive issues for our individuals that we take care of <clears throat> with our legislative representatives. So not only is it Drew Springer and his staff up here locally, but it's all of our legislative representatives down in Austin. That is the only job that I have. Uh, we have about 100 people that work with us in our business now. Uh, so we don't go into our brick and mortar location. All we do every single day is work on the larger substantive issues for people with intellectual disabilities. So when our Bruce, thank you. So when Drew uh, Springer decided not to run for re-election, re it made sense for us to step up and step into that gap and say we've been doing this for our, uh, for the least of us, our special needs individuals. I believe that we can open that up for the constituency at large and do the same thing. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your consideration. Cody Snow some shit, I'll throw a little back. Go back, go back. Hat is brand new. Hey, hey, hey! I think you hey. might have got another drum. I'm store. an urban cowboy, not a cowboy. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Um, well, hey, everybody. My name is Jace Yarborough. I'm running for Senate District 30. I'm a seventh generation Texan, husband, and father. Uh, went down to UT, studied electrical engineering, uh, then joined the military, was in the Air Force for a time. Got out to go to law school, went to Stanford Law School out in a foreign country called California. Um, and then uh, after law school came back here, my wife and I wanted to raise our kiddos where one of us had roots. Um, and so uh, I was raised mostly out near Abilene. She was born here in Denton, and her dad served on the Denton Fire Department for decades. So we move up to, to Sanger, that's where we live. Uh, by day, I'm a conservative attorney. So my law partner and I bring cases that are strategically designed to advance and defend conservative principles in the courts. I'll give you an example. This past September, the city of San Antonio set aside half a million dollars in taxpayer funds to be used to transport young pregnant Texas women to pro-abortion states for the sole purpose of procuring an abortion. That is illegal. It's criminal activity now, and no government entity can designate taxpayer dollars for criminal activity, and so we sued to put a stop to that. We represent Texas Right to Life, a number of passengers and others down in San Antonio. That's the sort of thing I do by day. By <laughs> night, I still serve as a reservist in the Air Force. If you Google my name, you will probably see that uh, I'm in a little bit of a spat with the Air Force. First Liberty Institute, which is a nonprofit uh, uh, law firm out in Plano, they do great work on behalf of those whose religious freedom has been infringed. They represent me. Uh, I was uh, formally punished because I exercised my First Amendment rights. So I pushed back uh, against the Air Force um, uh, because of that. I'm very committed to uh, Texas families of all socioeconomic means being able to take a uh, stronger hand in the education of children. And so my wife and I last year founded, along with some friends and family, a little classical Christian academy, St. Francis Academy. We run, we run it up here in Sanger. We've got about 30 kids up to the, the sixth grade. Um, it's a blessing for us and our children as well. Married to my high school sweetheart, uh, we got five beautiful children. If you grab one of my push cards, you can see them, and I will tell you they are free. Um, I am running this race because Senate District 30 is a deep red Senate district, and we need a deep red senator. And I'm the option in that race to give you that. Thank you very much.
Hello, I'm Brian Hagenboom. Thank you for having us here tonight. Thank you to the, the club here. This club does a lot of great work, I know. I appreciate you. I talked about wife what I should say to the women's club, and then she said, just speak from the heart, so I'll do that. Um, I love the Lord. I love this country. I love this North Texas that we live in, where we've raised our family over the last 30 years. And I love that family, and I've proven that I'm willing to fight for them. After graduating from the Naval Academy, I served 10 years defending our country as a Naval officer. 17 years ago, I started a company from scratch, bought and built it, where now it supports my family and 750 truck drivers. Nine years ago, I was fed up with the Obama administration. Trump motivated me. I got involved in the Republican Party as a precinct chair. Successful at that, rose to be the Denton County Republican Party chairman. Under my watch, we, we uh, in the last general election, we won 19 of 19 races, a complete Republican sweep. I'm the only candidate that's worked like that in the Republican Party to help keep Texas red. I'm the only candidate endorsed by the governor and the lieutenant governor. They believe I'm the best candidate for the job. I'm also endorsed by many senators, elected officials, and key conservative organizations like pro-life and police organizations. I've proven I'll fight for our conservative values, and I usually succeed in what I put my hand to. I'll work to secure the border, support law enforcement, and keep Texas economy running strong. And give us a great place to live for our, for our kids and our grandkids. Thank you for your consideration. Oh, hello, I am Dr. Carrie Moore, and I am a Christian conservative Republican in that order. And I'm also an emergency room doctor and a small business owner who sees the many emergencies that are facing our state every single day. And let me tell you, they are very real. I'm running for two main reasons. The number one reason is because I truly feel that the Lord called me to this time and place and sharpened me for a time such as this. The second is that I believe that the people of Senate District 30 need someone that's going to listen to them and truly represent them in Austin and not be looking out for the special interests or other parts of Texas. We need somebody that is from here that wants to represent you. I am endorsed by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton and I have served as his appointee to the Texas Opioid Abatement Fund Council since 2021. I was also appointed by Governor Greg Abbott in 2020 to the Texas Medical Board District Review Committee to oversee the uh, public interest as well. So I'm no stranger to Austin. I do want to tell you that I am a huge proponent of election integrity because if we don't have our vote and our elections are not secure, we don't have anything. And we have to be sure that we are sending people to Austin that truly represent us that live where they say, that are not going to lie to you about who they are, where they live, and what they do in order to seek office, nor by their way there. And ladies, I know this is the uh, Republican Women's Club, so I will close with this. I do believe that the woman's place is in the House, but it is also in the Senate. And I absolutely ask for your vote and appreciate you. Thank you very much. statewide endorsements in this race. I want you to know that my first priority will always be to accomplish what the needs of Senate District 30 residents and constituents are. Um, I understand it's necessary to work and compromise with uh, those who are down in Austin, but I will always think first and foremost of you, and my existence in our campaign is a testimony to that. There are a lot of powerful people who called me, a lot of powerful offices, and didn't want me to do what I'm doing right now, because our campaign is standing up for the truth. We are giving the people of Senate District 30 the conservative viable option in this race because we are a very conservative district. We deserve to have a very conservative senator. 
If I was going to kowtow to the powers that be in Austin, I wouldn't be standing in front of you today. I will absolutely prioritize your will. I'll absolutely prioritize the legislative priorities of the Republican Party as modified by what I hear from you and what we all agree on. So I appreciate your support. Jay Sharrow, thanks. Same question, or do you need me to repeat it? Go ahead. Okay. Is the will of people more important than what's passed, lobbyists, and leadership and push in their agendas? Why or why not? In the second part, and do you support red flag laws? Yes. Okay. Of course, the will of the people is more important. We're government for the people and by the people, and we can never forget that. I'm endorsed by the lieutenant governor, and the lieutenant governor is by no means a liberal or a rhino. I, I agree with everything he got done in, in the Senate. The people are far more important than any kind of special interest, and I, I am not beholden to any of them. I consider myself to be similar to Donald Trump and a successful businessman, funded my own campaign, and, and I'm beholden to no one. In terms of red flag, black laws, I'm a complete uh, first, Second Amendment right proponent. I do not believe there should be any law that can take a gun away from an American, American citizen. Thank you. So, first part of the question being about the will of the people, and let me tell you, the power is yours. The government does not have money or power at all. It belongs to us, and we loan it out to whoever we elect. And we forget that sometimes. So we, we allow for people to get comfortable in their seats in Austin and, and think that they can they fall more in love with the job than they do with the people they're representing. That's one of the main reasons that I'm running. I think that kind of pretty much speaks for itself. I want to address the red flag law. I am absolutely opposed to red flag laws. And I think that surprises a lot of people because I am a physician and I think Working in the emergency room, you would think, well, maybe she would have another idea. But no, it can be absolutely abused and take away your constitutional rights. There are too many people that want to use it against you. And we need to have people who can fight against the ideology that is somehow safe from the psychological component of it to have these red flag laws. They absolutely encroach upon your Second Amendment rights, and we have to avoid them. Thank you. Sure. Is the will of the people more important than what tax, lobbyists, and leadership they push in their agendas? Why or why not? And secondly, do you support red, red flag laws? Yeah, it's absolutely important. What you guys can't see under my suit jacket here is on my arm. So my 19-year-old is named Liberty, or excuse me, is named Justice, so don't tell her that. My eight-year-old is named Liberty. So those words have a lot more meaning to me than just a phrase written on a piece of paper. Uh, in between both of those is the words, we the people. That's everyone here. That's everyone in this district. Those are the people that we're going to represent. I'm the only candidate here that goes to every single county in our legislative center, in our Texas City District 30, every single week. And I've been doing that for weeks and will continue to from now until March the 5th. So we the people are the only people I'm responsible to. Uh, I don't have to take any donations whatsoever. Um, we're not going to send a lot of money. I don't believe in sending mailers. But if you get one of my uh, advertisements, it's because I walked up and handed it to you personally. I think that goes a long way. I think people like that. That's the kind of representative I want to have. That's who I'll be. In regards to red flag laws, for time runs out, though, absolutely not. I don't believe in them at all. Thank you. to Mr. Hayden, who first. So, okay, so here's um, the next question. What is your opinion and thoughts on the legislative priorities as outlined by the people, voting on at the state convention by the delegates as priorities? And part two, what will you personally commit to do if elected? Yeah, I, I am a Republican Party chairman of Denton County. I absolutely agree with the priorities of the, of, the, of the RPT. And I have written down here what those priorities are. I can find them real quick. Let me name off the top of my head which ones I know. Election integrity. We make sure that we have no, no we like any children. We get pornography out of the schools. School choice. 
Um, protecting Sunday Second Amendment rights, gun, gun rights. Those are the key things. I think I lost one of them, but, but I absolutely support all the RPT uh, priorities and legislation. I work hard to get them passed. special session without handling it is parental choice and vouchers. I want to get that done. So what I'd like to do is work on those issues, continue to work on them, enhance our election security, and also work on issues like parental choice to make a voucher system where parents determine the educational needs of their children, but also make sure to be mindful of undermining our rural ISPs to make sure they're supported and not underfunded and cratered. Thank you. disagree with any of the Republican priorities. The problem, <laughs> the problem as Vince pointed out is that folks go down there and behind closed doors they lose their spines. They don't do what they tell us they're going to do. So what we need to do is look not at what we're telling you right now, but what we've done in the past, before we were running for office, before anybody was looking at us. And I'll tell you a story, okay? So I was a reservist in the military. I got the order just like every other airman, soldier, sailor, marine, guardsman to get the vaccine. And I said no. I pushed back. Uh, and, and to show you how deep the rot in our institutions has become, uh, one of the things that I was required to do when I filed for a religious exemption was go through an interview process with a chaplain. Now, I was ready for the Gestapo, right? This guy was coming to trip me up, trick me six ways from Sunday. 30 seconds in the conversation, it's clear this guy's a true believer. He recognizes that I am too. And so we're having a great back and forth about C.S. Lewis and G.K. Chesterton, but he tells me this. He says, my superiors have told me, to trick you into saying things that are going to make it easier for them to deny your religious attention to right. That's what I fought against, and I won, and I was vindicated. And I promise you I'll be faithful to those principles behind closed doors and the
who knows how to look at budgets, who understands the impacts that can be different from area to area. The company I used to own was within um, Nevada and Texas, all over the state of Texas. So I have the experience to represent that and understand the, the importance of how different rural versus urban areas are. And yes, I do reside in the district and I have lived here with my family for the last 15 years. All right, I'm going to go out of order. Hell yeah, I live in the district. Of course I'm here. It's a requirement. Some, some up here will pitch to you that it's a, a gimmick. Uh, unfortunately, it's a constitutional requirement that you live in this district before you run. Uh, some will lie to you about that reality and the circumstances in which they qualify for this office. I will not. Uh, that being said, why am I the best candidate? Quite frankly, this is not a question of competency. Everyone up here is competent. I run a multi-million dollar business. Uh, there's other big business owners here. There's attorneys here. Went to Stanford. There's doctors here. Here's the reality, though. These people are busy people. Are they going to be distracted? Can they be down there 240 days? How do you operate your clinic? How do you operate your law firm? How do you operate your big business? I think what we see right now in Austin is those very problems, and they're manifesting in their legislative matters. They don't have the bandwidth. They don't have the attention uh, that is required to serve 11 counties, 1 million people. This is all I do. I work on substantive legislation for the most deserving Texans. That is my paid job. I'll continue to do that, open it up for the Texas, for all the constituents of Senate District 30, and I appreciate your consideration for your I'm running in this race because I think we're in a cultural crisis. Right? From public schools and libraries, to military and corporations, the left has become aggressive in using the means of power to work against conservatives. We need somebody in the Texas Senate, and every level of government, who sees that clearly and who has fought and won against those powers, even when they didn't think one day they were going to be standing up in front of people and asking for their vote. I encourage you, go do your research. I'm the only viable candidate in this race who has not given to Democrats, funded leftist lobbyists, push vaccine mandates, or chair committees that have pushed for things like gun-free zones. We need a viable conservative in this race. That is me and me alone. I absolutely live in this district. I live just out of Lake Ray Roberts on three and a half acres where I run a school um, that's blessed to me and my kids, uh, and it's a great place to raise a family. That's why we're here. I appreciate your vote. Thanks. Thank you again. Well, I've already talked about this. I've proven that I'll fight for our values in our country in this historic Texas. I, I fought to defend our country for 10 years as a Navy officer. I fought to build a, a business, a large, a very large business. I'm only candidate that created hundreds of jobs for Texans. I fought within the Republican Party alongside many of you to, to keep Texas red. And I'm the only candidate endorsed by the governor and the lieutenant governor, and they believe I'm the most qualified candidate. And I I plan on doing this job full-time. I have the ability to do that. It's actually more than a full-time job as I've traveled around the district through Springer. I'm absolutely and have every right to run in the, in for this for SD30. I'm a resident. I can't, my, my opponents know this, but they keep dragging out the court, just like Trump's opponents do. I think it's because they probably know I'm the front runner with these kind of endorsements, and it's the best shot they got. They're lost in court every time. Chase. His, his court case was flatly denied. Monday, of course, the, the last will be the, the end of, of Kerry's case against me. Uh, so I look forward to getting your vote. Appreciate it. Okay. And now we're going to do uh, your closing statement. And Mr. Pope? Just say first one. Yes. Okay. Just work out that. One minute? One minute. Three minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes. <laughs> All right, guys, I uh, appreciate y'all being here again. Uh, thank you to the Republican women. They're all the heartbeat of uh, this county and uh, of our Republican Party as well. So here, here's the reality. Do you feel like the Texas legislature is working for you right now? Does anyone feel super confident about, about the direction of the state right now? Who have we been sending down to represent us consistently? What's, what's a common job down there? Anyone know? Well, what's a common job would be, there's a lot of attorneys down there. And I'm going to hate on them a little bit. 
There's not enough of we the people down there. We got a lot of people down there who want to talk, they want to have meetings, they don't know how to do things, so nothing gets done. The problem is, is that we don't have enough of you and me, we the people down there. And that's what I'm offering here. Every once in a while, you get somebody in there who just the force of life is having to work themselves into a groove where they can do this. They're not somebody who's elitist, they're not the, this rich, uh, big business person, but they're just a common person, you and me. That's what I represent. I appreciate you sitting me down there. Thank you. My name is Cody Martin. Well, as, I, as an attorney, I can say, it's the 98% that give the rest of us a bad name. So, yeah, my, my dad, my dad, last job my dad had was a trucker, right? I'm, I'm you know, I, I drive a 2006 Dodge 2500 4x4 because I pull an RV and take my, my kids, you know, RV for a couple of years, right? That's who I am and where I come from. Um, you know, I do think the point that Brent brings up is, is a good one, right? I mean, one of the biggest problems with our government right now is, the folks who have power and have powerful friends have a lot of money. You know what they tell us? There's some rules that apply to y'all, and they don't apply to me. Now, I can't control judges. All I can do is lay out the facts. And the folks that have been watching the court filings that we've been making, it's very clear to everyone in this room, that man included, what he's doing. I promise you, that's exactly the kind of thing that I will attack for the I will stand up for us. You don't have to try and push rock up the hill. I, mean, I share your values. We're one. I appreciate your vote. Thank you very much. Let me say first, as a fellow officer of the military, I don't appreciate you challenging my integrity. I absolutely have every right to run for this office. But I want to keep this to be a positive campaign. I will try to do that despite what's been happened so far. Thank you again for letting us be here tonight. Appreciate the women the women's club here. Here's what I think you should take away from tonight. I'm the only candidate who fought to build a business that created hundreds of jobs for Texas. I'm the only candidate who, who fought within the Republican Party to keep, it te keep Texas red. I'm the only candidate endorsed by the governor and the lieutenant governor. They believe me in me and my campaign. I'm the candidate that can do this more more of a full-time job than anybody else. And it's more than a full-time job as I've traveled around the district of Bruce Springer to see that. I'll fight to keep Texas and North Texas a great place to live for our kids. I'll make you two promises. One is that I'll always see God's will and wisdom in any decisions we make. And you will see me out in your neighborhoods and with you, listen to you, and, and serve you the best I can. I'm Brent Hagebu. I appreciate your vote. God bless you all. God bless our great state and nation. Thank you all again for having me here. And I want to reiterate that I really care. I am the candidate that has experience in Austin, and I care about you. I care about your voice in representing you. I want you to take that away about me. I have also created hundreds of jobs in Texas. I also have the endorsement of the Texas Attorney General. I've been in this race since before anyone of the incumbent has even dropped out yet. There's a reason for that. It's because you needed a voice that was strong and for you. And I will say that integrity is everything. Integrity is everything. And if people will lie to you now, they will lie to you when they get to Austin. And I promise you, I will not lie to you. You may not always agree with me, but I will be honest with you. I appreciate your vote, and God bless Texas. Thank you all very much. If we could have a nice round of applause for all. Okay, the next race is going to be House District uh, 64. And if the candidates will come forward, Representative Stuckey drew uh, the first place. Uh, Mr. Hopper 